Hey guys, Jay here. So today I'm doing something I should have done about a year and a half ago. And let's talk about how I altered this Organization 13 jacket. I actually altered two of them. I have one for me and one for my friend Atlas. He paid me for his, but whatever. So in the past I did a review on this jacket and the other one. I mean, they're both the same, so it doesn't really matter. So I did alter some stuff on this and then altered it again. <laughs> and then there's stuff that I still have to wait for, but I need to get this out. Um, if I get the stuff, then I'll add it in and everything, but we'll see what happens. Um, so to start, everything that I've done with these costumes that's on video will be in a playlist up here, and I'll see what I can do about putting everything in the description. Uh, and then for things like the boot covers, there's no video for it. Um, it. It's literally the same thing as what I did with my Cloud Advent Children boot covers, just taller. I actually used my regular cloud boot covers because they're the same length that I needed and just did the cutout on it, the, the weird cutout that they have on their boots. And that was it. <laughs> so I actually cheated kind of because those fit me and now these fit me, you know. Um, so first, let me just talk about how I went over these real quick. Um, so all I did was I did the, the shape, like I said, and I made boot covers just the same way you would normally make boot covers. And then these also have a wire in here and what you're hearing there you might have heard that crackling that's just hot glue that i can always just re-put there it just the glue cracks and it's not a big deal but um if it if it comes off i can just put new glue on there it's not a big deal um and so it keeps its shape so it'll keep its shape around our leg uh the ones you can buy or if you make these without that they flop around everywhere this this little piece flops around and you don't want that so i made it so it doesn't do that uh, and then I just used blue tape around the uh, around the edge to mask off where I didn't want silver and then used silver acrylic paint on them and then used uh, clear coat over that to make it so it stops it from coming off, which didn't help that much, but it's better than nothing. And I can always go back over it with the silver at any point and it'll be just fine. It'll be just like normal. So onto the coat. Uh, the things that I altered were I added these the drawstrings, the actual string itself, and the, whatever that's called, the end of the drawstring, uh, this chain here, and this zipper pull, and there's another zipper pull on the other, the other piece of zipper because it's a two-way zipper thing for these. So uh, there's one on each, you know. Uh, so first I'm gonna talk about how I did this thing right here because that had the most work done to it and was redone because the last way we did it kept breaking. So. Uh, just to go over real quick the old version so you it's hard to see but I'll take b-roll and stuff but there's the centerpiece here that has two cylinders on it these two little cylinders glued back to back so what I used to have was five of these that were all connected to each other so I'll have to explain that so uh, the only time that it look that it looks like this <laughs> is outside of Kingdom Hearts 3 game cutscenes and you uh key back cover i almost said union cross but key back cover um so in those two instances they have these and there's five of them connected to each other that go all the way around so there's the center one two here and two more there so i don't know why but they do but in the kingdom Hearts 3 cgi pre-rendered cutscenes, it looks like this they're two different models completely they look completely different. They'd made them like the the other way only for for the uh, Unreal Engine game style. That's it. They didn't make it that way for anything else. Look at the Kingdom Hearts 4 uh, stuff. You can see at the very end, you can see two characters wearing the organization coats, which we're assuming is Master of Masters and Lushu. They have this. <laughs> There's looks like this. It doesn't make... In back cover, they have the other one. It makes no sense. So... We're pretty sure this is the canon look and the other one we're just gonna disregard and just pretend it doesn't exist. The other reason <laughs> is the, a main reason to just pretend that one didn't exist. It breaks. <laughs> it's like impossible to have without it breaking. Until we can 3D print like solid steel, it's not gonna happen. I don't even know, you, you can print 3D print metal, but I don't think it's good enough. <laughs> um, these, Everything that's 3D printed here, so uh, these little cylinder things, the zipper poles, and these things are all 3D printed with uh, resin that's flexible, like a flexible type resin, so it 
less likely to break on you. It still breaks on you. <laughs> so uh, we, we had the things, because so what we got was one of these and uh, with a loop on it, like a little dome or a, like a little arch, and then another one with a little arch, and they were the arches were connected. So it was like two arches connected like this, and then two cylinders connected to those arches. And then we would take one end of one cylinder, connect it to another end, and then, you know, connect that way. And that way it was all a big connected thing. I'll see if I can get you a picture of what we had, but I'm not 100% sure I can. But yeah, um, the point is those arches just snapped. And in, 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 like, it was just crazy. They just kept snapping in half. And just putting them on and taking them off broke them a lot. So, and I got a whole bunch of extras just in case. And they still just kept breaking. So I only have a few left that are actually still like not painted. Uh, and I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> so what I did was I took it all apart because it was all broken. And these chain links right here that are on here. So there's one chain link here that ho hooks these two together. And one that hooks these two together. And then three that goes from the lobster clip or whatever you want to call that. Uh, I call them lobster clips because they work like a lobster. Um, and so it goes from that down to the top of this one and then same on the other side i still have a bunch of it left i have like 10 20 feet of it so the good thing about this one it's both strong and weak uh so it's weak enough that i can use my hands to open the links you normally can't do that but it's also light because of that it makes it super light so it doesn't weigh down and gravity's not going to affect the shape of it or anything and it'll be fine um but also if they break the chains will break before anything else. Meaning I can just replace the chain with the ton of chain that I have left. These links are like, not even, they're like three quarters of an inch and I have like 20 feet of it. There's way more than enough to, if those break, if they get caught on something and they break or something, I can just do another one. I can just add more onto it. It's not a big deal. So I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> that never happens. So I'm gonna run with that and call it good. Um, so what I did was uh, I took the pieces, they were doubled up like this, and I kept two of them, one for me and one for Atlas. There's actually two extras just in case, so that if we lose these or something happens to them just by accident, I have two more that I can replace them with. And I have a bunch more of the eyelets that I used here, so I'm not worried about that either. So um, the, I took the ones that I wanted only one of, just snapped them in half. It was pretty, they were just super glued together, so I just snapped them in half and made sure the loops were taken off, those little arches. And then um, I didn't even really need to grind them down because you can barely see them because they snapped off at the base. So it's not a big deal. But the ones that you could see, I grinded down, uh, repainted everything, and then called it good. And then put um, uh, a hole in it with a Dremel. I used just a little a little cutting bit and just cut into it. And then used a uh, eye bolt on each side, which I believe is 1.8 millimeters, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I did it with a caliper, <laughs> uh, but I believe it says on the box that is 1.8 millimeters. I'm not sure. Um, two millimeters would work fine too. It's not a big deal. Uh, just get something small enough that you think would work. Um, and oh, all of these, it, I got to find where I got them all, where I got all the um, the, mo the models for it. Uh, and I'll post all those in the description. Don't worry about that. Um, so if you want to get it yourself and, and do that, uh, then you can get the right the same size. We didn't alter the size at all of any of this. So you just print it out at the size it's already given and just find eyelets that are the right size. But yeah, so uh, I, after the eyelets were put on, I just put on each uh, link. And in the video that you're going to see of me putting the links on, I accidentally put three on this bottom one instead of the one here. Uh, that's because, so it's, it's like the centerpiece and then there's one link and then the next piece. Uh, that's because I mistakenly thought it was three. Uh, because their little loops on their things here look like more chain. They're just big loops. I can't have those, obviously. So I needed them small like this. So it just looks a little off. But um, you can see that, that it's actually not extra chain. It's it's a, a loop thing with a chain connected to that. This is stronger. I'm going to just go with this. So I thought it was chain. So I put three. But it's actually one. So it looks now it's more accurate because it has the one. So just do that, do one. Do whatever you want, honestly. It's not a big deal, <laughs> nobody cares. But if you want accuracy, yeah. And then, so where these lobster clips attach, uh, I did have to alter this. So these these buttons, they're actually like little eagle buttons. Like they're um, military eagle buttons. Like it has the, 
the U.S. military um, eagle. I don't know. It has like the little the eagle with the crest and everything. I don't know what it's called. But they were up <laughs> way up here, like up against the collar on this seam. They're supposed to be on this seam. The problem is this seam isn't in the right spot. This is supposed to be like collarbone, like right here and go down towards the armpit. So it doesn't it doesn't go the correct way and it's not where it's supposed to be, but it's fine. So it's not accurate right there. So I moved it, it's fine. So this seam here should be down where I put the thing, but it's fine. It's, I could add that if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to, it's not a big deal. Uh, I might later, I don't know. Um, and then I did the same thing on the other side and then these just clipped to it. I'm not unclipping it because they are a pain in the butt to clip back on. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Uh, moving on to how I made the rest of this stuff. So like I said, this is all 3D printed resin uh, and this is like a flexible resin and that's specifically for pieces like this uh, and the zipper pull things because these have these little scraggly bits. I don't know what these are called, but they're, they're little pieces that could easily break off and making them out of a flexible resin makes them less likely to break because they can they have a little bit more flex so they're not as uh, they're not as stiff and not as brittle so they're less likely to snap so and you can you can see they're they're fine <laughs> nothing's happening to them i haven't had any problems with these yet except for the fact that i probably shouldn't have used spray paint <laughs> so um i'll get into that in a minute <laughs> uh let's talk about um uh, the, so the drawstring is easy. Uh, this is just four millimeter, I believe, uh, silver cording. I have more somewhere. Um, and I have the I have the box somewhere, the, the spool somewhere that says what size it is. I just don't know where it is. Um, this had a black uh, drawstring that was made out of the same pleather that the rest of it's made out of. It was just a strip that was sewn down um, to make like a, a shoelace almost and just fed through it. And it had like little bobbles on the end or whatever. Um, so I took that out and fed this through there. Um, and then I actually did that last because I did these first so that I didn't have to paint them on the coat because you can imagine why that would be a bad idea. Um, so, uh, I, I did the, these things first and then did all the string stuff. Um, but that's how I did the string. But so these are three pieces. There's this top piece here and this big bottom piece with all the scraggly bits. And the top piece came in two pieces and two halves. And then I could sandwich those halves around the cord. So I got all those pieces painted and everything. And then uh, I used spray paint and um, spray clear coat, which that's where the problem comes in. Um, in the heat, the silver spray paint, for some reason, is going through the, the clear coat or the clear coat's melting or something um, and I don't think, I don't know if it's on this jacket. Oh, there's some right here. There's a little, uh, silver gets like left behind, like it sticks to it. And then when you pull it off, silver is left behind. You can clean it off with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, but it, you don't want it to keep happening. So I have to find a way to fix that, <laughs> make it stop happening. Um, I don't know how to do that. So I think when I hang it up now, I'm just going to like wrap these like in, um, and bubble wrap, or no, maybe I'm gonna do this in tissue paper so that uh, it doesn't like adhere to the plastic or something in the heat. So I might do that, but hanging them up, I've also been putting this inside because you can't see in there anyway. So if it gets stuck to the inside and, and leaves a little tiny bit of silver behind, it's inside, you won't see it. That's, that's an option, I don't know. Anyway, so what I did though was clamped it around on the top here, glued that in with super glue, uh, so that it wouldn't come out and it's not coming out and then glued the two pieces together and then called it good <laughs> so that was that was really all uh it's super easy so i and i did do one of these first i don't remember which end i don't really care but it doesn't matter which end you do first um i did that first then i fed the thing through there like with a full length of it and then kind of got them where i wanted them i knew that i needed like an extra like half inch of this or something and cut it where I needed it, and then glue the second one on. That way I had this the right length that I wanted it without having any problems. So the other thing that I did was these 
the things here, the zipper poles. Like I said, everything's printed out of that um, flexible resin from a 3D printer. And so my, one of my friends did this. Uh, he doesn't, I don't think he wants to be uh, uh, credited or whatever. Uh, he never asks me to put, like he never has me put his credit on anything, like his accounts. He doesn't have accounts anywhere, really, other than like he has a YouTube channel, but he doesn't really give it to anybody. So I can't really give you any of that information or I can't credit him with anything but that's not the point um so so yeah that's why i'm not crediting him because most people would be like hey credit credit the artists credit the printers and stuff he doesn't want to be so i'm not going to um so uh yeah he printed all of this stuff for me so the problem with these these uh zipper poles is i have to heat them up and cool them back down and i think that hardens the resin too much so like it cures and everything and does its thing or whatever but it, it whatever that is makes it a certain level of flexibleness to get it on here i have to cut open the thing like i have to cut it open up here uh this thing and then heat it up to open it get it through this zipper thing, whatever this part of the zipper is called put it through that and then heat it back up if it needs to be heated back up again because it cools down pretty fast and then hold it closed until it cools down again and I think that heats it up too much because these keep snapping on us. We broke one already. We broke the same one twice, actually. So we do know which coats are whose because he has a mask in his. So I know which one his is. So I know this is the one I've been wearing. Um, his, which is hanging up over, that's why I'm pointing. Um, this zipper on his, the zipper pull, uh, when we were wearing it at soccer con, our second time wearing them, it snapped. And so we had to find the piece and super glue it back together because we didn't have extras so we did that and it worked for the time being and then all the pieces for the thing snapped off when we took it off but i was trying to do all this stuff like altering it because um when i moved all this stuff i didn't do that until like recently so when i tried to do all that and then add all this stuff and put it on his coat i was opening it up to get it off the the hanger and the thing snapped again <laughs> and it went flying across my room so i don't know where it is so that we need a whole new one for his uh he's in the process of printing it right now i think literally the time of this recording last night so today is the 12th i believe so on the 11th at like midnight almost 11 30 he texted me and said that he got his he was fixing his 3d printer he got it fixed and he was ready to put it on the build you know put start printing it and everything today so i think he's printing it today and he's gonna print us a ton of them <laughs> so we have extras now uh so that's a good thing um he's also printing them out of even better flexible resin so it's going to be more flexible and even less likely to break on us we're trying to find a way to have them cast out of metal not going to happen yet but if we can figure out how to do that and get them on there we're going to do that because this is this is just bull right now it's impossible to get these things to work also we can't use these zipper poles like as zipper poles we can't use them functionally because they'll just break so we have one sec so we have this thing right here this was the actual zipper pole that came on it and i used um metal shears or cutters or whatever to get it off so we can put the thing on there probably should have left it on <laughs> it's whatever now uh, but because uh, you probably wouldn't have been able to see it that well behind it anyway but eh, it's whatever um, but we put this in there like we stick it in there to be able to unzip it <laughs> and then do the same for the other side to unzip it there's a lock in there it's the zipper I don't understand this zipper there I don't I think it's that way with all zippers but I'm not even sure anymore but uh, there's a piece of metal in there that that like it, it pulls back like a trigger like a gun trigger and so you pull it forward and then you can start doing it like it unlocks and then you can unzip it we need this for that <laughs> so we have one of these each i have one for me and one for him his is still over there in his pocket mine isn't in the pocket because i've been moving it around so i didn't want to lose it so i actually i have a table right here it's just right there <laughs> so yeah um we need those and we need to not lose them um but if we can make these out of metal and get them in there somehow they might be able to pull that trigger so we can unzip it and use them functionally and if they're metal they're not going to snap on us so that's what we're hoping for and he's all, the guy who did all this the 3d printer he is making a metal fortune so he 
he was thinking about already doing them. And so he's going to figure it out for me <laughs> and just hope everything goes really well. Anyway, I don't think there's anything else that I needed to do with this. So that should be the end. Um, one good thing that I noticed while wearing this, I think I talked about it in the, um, in the review of the costume itself. Uh, it has pockets. These pockets are really deep. So yeah, they're that deep. That's a deep pocket. That's perfect. We can fit our phones and our wallets in there without them getting stolen because it's so deep that people would have to actually dig in there to get stuff out. So <laughs> I highly recommend these jackets, man. These are good. And I've actually recommended these to other people. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Um, this chain though, I should tell you, I have no idea where to get this exact chain. <laughs> I got it in a craft box. So I bought a box that had a whole bunch of craft stuff from an estate sale in like 2011. That was in it, <laughs> all that chain. All right, so my camera battery just died. Uh, good thing it was at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, so that's how I altered this Organization 13 jacket. So if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later.